well. So let's speak on the subject of labor because we know today is World Labor Day. But more importantly, as May Day is being observed across the country, uh, we also know that there are pertinent issues confronting various worker groups. But we're talking about the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, and we have the president on the line, Philip Larson, is going to uh, look at issues of promotion, etc. A very good morning to you. Good morning, Echo. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, and this is not a call. My name is Roland, Roland Walker. Okay, Roland, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, more importantly, um, what summarily are uh, the numerous, based on what your own observations are, the, the problems uh, facing the, the teacher worker group, so to speak? Thank you very much. I want to say good morning to your cherished listeners. I say are you equal to all Ghanaian workers, especially Honourable, we have a lot of challenges as teachers. Let me start from the supply of material. Anybody who goes to work has a, a, a full supply of whatever he or she has to work with. For the teacher, we have to use our own money to buy chalk. Even when the government supplies, we are giving four boxes of chalk per class per term. And so if a term has 15 weeks, you are using four boxes of stock for the 16 weeks. If you have a staff strength of 23, you are giving four lesson notebooks. And it is blown out of proportion that we have supplied material. Registers. These days, teachers are using their own money to buy registers. The capitation grant is not coming. And it's only one CD 50 pesos per child per term. Now, this one city, 50 pesos, we use them to organize sport and culture in our schools. We have security personnel in our schools. We use the same amount to pay them. We also have to pay utility bills. And it is all from that same one city, 50 pesos. Apart from that, the children are supposed to write examination at the end of the term. And the examination is no less than five cities and six cities. And so these are some of the problems that we have. Parents are supporting us. And this new government is saying that you'll be coming out with a legislation that would discontinue parents' of, uh, support to the various schools, especially at the basic level. Now, let me talk about promotion. A teacher worked for a number of years. At the time he qualifies for promotion, he will not be invited. The, the invite delays for sometimes two years, three years, four years. And so at the time the teacher is promoted, if he's successful, he has to be paid back all the arrears. Now, government is saying that notionally he's going to promote us, but the money that has to be paid will be paid according to the day you receive your letter of promotion. And so, honorable, we have a lot of challenges. People have worked for a number of years, two years, three years, and they have been paid for only three months. Now, government is saying that he didn't know those people were working, were at post. Has there been any investigation to find out whether those people were really at post? And these are challenges that we face as teachers. And it is very, very horrible. Honorable, I want to say this morning that if this nation wants to develop, then we have to open our eyes wide to the teaching fraternity. If not, Ghana cannot develop. To be honest, we have a lot of problems. Now, if we look at critically the notable issues that you're complaining about, is yes. it that perhaps um, if you look at your oversight ministry, those issues are not being looked at or perhaps even attended to? That is how I see the whole thing. Or they are maybe they are looking at us uh, as being people whose job is not all that important. Because if you talk about education, it should be the first thing. We should be supplied with all the materials that we need. Look at the fact that somebody has not done his work well and teachers have been deleted from the PV. And so last month, a lot of teachers were not paid. Is it the duty of the teacher to be running errands on his salary? Or what do we expect teachers to do? We are in the classroom working. Our condition says that we should not go to the office during instructional hours. And so it means that we cannot leave the children in the classroom and be chasing for things that are due us. Somebody is not doing his work well, and nobody is sanctioned, and the teacher is always penalized. Is that the right thing, officer? <laughs> I guess uh, your guess is as good as mine. 
Do you think that you're marginalized in a way because perhaps uh, your needs are not prioritized? Seriously, we are being marginalized. Seriously. When you talk about education, people are saying teachers are many, but we have some schools that do not even have teachers. Teachers, a lot of teachers are leaving. When people go to work and they have all the materials to work with, we have to use our own money, the salaries that is paid to us at the end of the month, to purchase some of these materials. Sometimes we even use our own money to buy school uniform for these children. We pay for the examination fee. We give them food to eat. And yet we are, we are not respected. People think that, oh, what for teachers, don't mind them. You remember sometimes somebody made a comment that we have the top, we'll not give you. What do you think needs to be done to improve the welfare of the teacher adequately in such a way that um, even though uh, your conditions of service may not necessarily be the best, you could be somehow complemented in a certain way uh, that meets you halfway? Thank you very much. Honorable, I think teachers must be well motivated. For now, apart from our salary, we have no motivation from anywhere. Our condition says that when you have to work in a rural area for two years, you qualify for steady leave with pay so that you could upgrade yourself. Nothing is coming. Teachers work for years at the rural areas, and yet they are not giving steady leave with pay. We have office. We are not giving steady leave with pay. You see, so I think we have to be looked at where. Teachers are not provided with accommodation. We are putting up new school buildings. And there is nothing like teachers' quarters or teachers' bungalow. Nothing of that sort. Teachers who have to travel long distances to work. I work in the village, and sometimes the taxi takes about one hour before it becomes four. And this teacher will have to be at the taxi station waiting. There is no accommodation for the teacher. And so I think that government must motivate teachers. We must be recognized and respected. Government should supply all the needed materials we need to do our work with so that we can do effective work. You, government should not expect us to use our own money. So at the end of last month, some people were not paid. I tell you that if school had been in section, it would have been horrible. And so for me, I think that government should do their right thing. Then finally, let me say that government should plan well so that if he says I qualify for promotion, he should give me the insight. If I apply, fine. I go through the interview when I'm successful. By September, my documents are ready. I am put on sale. If that one does not happen, then irrespective of the delay, I'll have to be paid all the money that is due me. That one will not agree. Teachers will never accept that. For you to delay my promotion for two years, three years, and you tell me that, my effective date will be the day you give me my letter of promotion. Office, as the president of NAT, we will not accept it. Mm. So how do you think that needs to be rationalized in a certain way that there's satisfaction among your rank and file? Yes, for us to be satisfied, I've already mentioned that we will have to be supplied with all the materials we need. We will have to be motivated. We will have to be paid well. There shouldn't be any delay. The capitation should come on time so that we'll be able to plan well. Even though it is not enough, we see how we manage it. And so government should have a second look at the way he's treating tickets. We are not happy. Mm. Well, uh, I know you, you have a certain difficulty also with um, the date of birth of, uh, of your teachers, because sometimes yes, we're told... Officer, thank you very much. The issue of date of birth is a serious one. You know, people had parents who were illiterate. They didn't have their correct date of birth. And so as they grew up, they had the right date of birth. And we have, we have the law. The law says that when you have gotten hold of your right date of birth, you have every right to go to court, swear an affidavit, and effect a change. So when people have seen their right date of birth and they want to effect a change, it has become a problem. I don't know what is happening. Somebody is 40 years and he's been asked to retire because the date they have with the GS is totally different from his correct date of birth. 
And if the person is trying to take the change, it becomes a problem. We are not just changing our data, but we are making corrections. These are corrections that we have to make. And so nobody should buy any data from effecting a change in view of correcting his or her date of birth. In view of this, have you alerted the authorities on some of these anomalies, which perhaps yes, are, are sometimes have. misinterpreted? Yes, we have. They are 100% aware. Some of the directors themselves had those challenges. And so why should they say that the teacher doesn't have the right to effect a change in his correct state of birth? Well, we, we wish you all the best, and we'll have to leave you. We know that today is a day for which uh, many teachers across the country, as well as all worker groups, uh, want the best conditions of service for um, their members, but more so with the various sections that they tend to work with. And we know the problems that teachers go through and um, how high, uh, as an esteemed group, that we also tend to hold you in our society. Uh, don't, don't think that we don't value your work at all, and I want to give you that assurance. And we've been speaking to the president for the Ghana National Association of Teachers, uh, Philippa Larson, speaking to us on the many subjects of issues, those plethora of issues confronting teachers across the country.